welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome back to the Do It Heartily Junior channel. As you can see, I'm sitting in a different chair. We're in a different room of my house. We're trying to figure out where's a good spot we can record because the current spot is filled with Apollo's toys and he's trying to learn how to walk. And so it's not really ideal to move stuff around. So right now I'm in my living room and, uh, but that's okay. You can worship God anywhere. You can talk about God anywhere. And so we're trying a different scene and uh, this might work out. It might not, but I hope you enjoy it for today. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to worship you, to speak about you, to praise your name, to pray to you, and to grow in our relationship with you, and to grow to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. We ask that you remove the devil and his distractions this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, like I said, we've been talking about 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. How to be a good soldier for the Lord. The previous videos, we were talking about Gideon, right? Now, now today, we're, talking, we're going to talk about Jesus, right? And so the title of the message, you may have already seen the, video, uh, the uh, title of the video, the best way to become a good soldier for the Lord is to get to know your highest ranking officer. So who is our highest ranking officer? It is Jesus, right? And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you are not a soldier for God yet. That's number one. You have to accept Christ, all right? You have to call upon him, right? Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to save you, to forgive you of your sins. And that is when you start your relationship with him. That is when you first start being that soldier. But that's not where it ends, right? A lot of people think, oh, all I got to do is say a prayer and that's it. And I'm done and I can live my life the way I want to for the rest of the, however long I live. No, 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 no. That's just the beginning then you continue your relationship, right? And any relationship, whether it's son to father or brother to brother or daughter to mother, whatever it is, you continue to get to know each other, right? And same thing for husband and wife with me and Miss Kathleen. We've been married for five years. There's still some things I'm learning about her. There's still some things she's learning about me. And the same thing is true with your relationship with Jesus. You need to get to know him. How well do you know your highest ranking officer, Jesus? I mean, think about it. We have four books in the Bible dedicated to knowing him. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, Have you read those books? Do you know where he was born? He was born in Bethlehem. Do you know what his mom's name is? It's Mary. Do you know what his stepdad's name is? It's Joseph. Did you know... Uh, that Jesus gets baptized. Did you know that Jesus faces the devil and his temptations? Do you know Jesus' teachings? Can you name all of Jesus' miracles? Can you name all of Jesus' disciples? Did you know he was hated? Did you know he was loved? He was betrayed by people who were close to him. He was arrested as an innocent man. All of these things can be found in the Bible, in God's Word. But how well do you know Jesus? Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, and we're going to start in verse number 27 because this is the most important part of getting to know Jesus, what he did for you and for me. Matthew 27, 27, it says, Then the soldiers, by the way, these are bad soldiers, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered him, gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, verse 28, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Jesus has faced embarrassment. Have you ever been humiliated? Have you ever been embarrassed? I mean, I've been embarrassed before, but I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I was just absolutely 
humiliated. Humiliated means you're embarrassed, but on a whole nother level. Like just, you just want to curl up or you just want to run and hide and you're crying and pouring tears and just, this is the worst thing ever, right? You've probably, be, probably been embarrassed in front of your classmates or friends or family members at some point, right? Jesus knows what it, that's like. And I'm not trying to be uh, funny by saying this, but look at verse 20. It says, and they stripped him. Jesus is now standing in a room amongst a bunch of other people, and he's naked. That is embarrassing, right? They're trying to embarrass Jesus. And it says there, they put on him a scarlet robe, verse 29, and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. You ever been stuck by a thorn before, or maybe a, a briar patch or anything like that? It hurts, right? And it pricks your skin, like, ow! Now imagine that, but long and deep, and it goes all the way in a circle and they press it on your head. That's what they did to Jesus. They press it on his head to cause him pain. You ever been in pain before? I have. Jesus knows what it's like to be embarrassed. Jesus knows what pain feels like. Okay, then it says there, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, hail, king of the Jews. You ever been made fun of before? Ever had a friend tease you or maybe somebody that's not a friend make fun of you. And he said, oh, that doesn't feel good. Jesus knows what that's like. Right here, right now, they are making fun of him in verse 29. It's not, it doesn't feel good when a bunch of people start making fun of you. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Verse number 30. And then it says, they spit upon him. Now, this is something that's never happened to me. No one has ever spit in my face or spit on me or anything like that. But I do know that would not feel good, right? The idea of somebody spitting on you, even if it's by accident or on purpose, that would just be, like, oh, that's gross. They're doing it on purpose. They're doing something very nasty and they're doing it to Jesus. And, and if that's happened to you, something gross has happened to you, Jesus knows what that feels like. It says, and they took the reed and smote him on the head. Now they're beating him up. I hope this hasn't happened to you, you know, whether it be at school or at home. Uh, you know, I've been beaten up before. My brother beat me up, right? And it's something that sometimes we go through. We get beat up. And if that's happened to you, guess what? Jesus knows what that feels like. He is being beaten up right now. And he is heavily outnumbered. And they are just punching him, hitting him in the head. Verse 31, it says, And after they had mocked him, they took the rope off from him, put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. Jesus has now experienced pain, both physical and emotional. He's been disrespected. And now we're going to go to verse number 35. It says, and they crucified him. Now, that's just, and they crucified him. That's four words, but so much happens in those four words. Giant nails, spikes, kind of like spikes they would use on a railroad. They were really big. They hammered them into Jesus's hands to hang him on wood. Then they hammered them into the bottom of his feet to hold him on this cross. Talk about experiencing extreme pain. And guys, remember this, okay? He's been spit on, he's been made fun of, he's been embarrassed, he's experiencing physical pain, he's being hung on the cross. Why? He's doing it all for you. For the sins that you have committed, he is dying for our sins. He did all for me, for you, for everybody in the world. It says there, they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lights that it might, lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Skip with me to verse number 50. It says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. After torture and torment for hours, he finally died for your sins. Now, the great thing is three days later, we read that he conquers death for you, right? He rises again, and that's great. But turn with me, too, to Revelation chapter 20, verse number 15. Revelation 20, verse 15. Oh, again, what I say, all of those things, Jesus did that for you and for me. And remember what I said at the very beginning. What's the first step to becoming a soldier for the Lord? you got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
Because if you don't, look at Revelation 20, verse 15, it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you become a soldier for the Lord, your name gets written down in the book of life. And there's no magic eraser that can take it out. They can't rip that page out with your name on it. Nothing like that. Once you accept Christ, you're a soldier for him. You're a child of God. And that's awesome. And you are destined for heaven whenever you pass away. And I hope that's many, 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 many years from now. But if you pass away and you never accept Christ, look at that second part, cast into the lake of fire. That's talking about hell. We all want to go to heaven. Nobody should want to go to hell. Because all those things that Jesus experienced, remember, go back and, and reread it about what he went through for you. If you don't accept Christ, then everything he went through for you is for naught, right? That means he, he went through all that pain for you for no reason, only for you to end up in hell. I don't want you to go there. Jesus definitely doesn't want you to go there because he died for you. He experienced so much pain for you and he wants to have a relationship with you. So to be, to be that good soldier for the Lord, number one, you got to accept Christ. And number two, get to know your highest ranking officer. And that is the Lord. Go study, learn about Jesus today. All right. We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.